Back when ink was non-existent, tales were orally passed The system was flawed and just couldn't last The stories got all jumbled and lost in translation From all the different languages in all the different nations These are ferret tales Bringing you unaltered legends Ferret tales Ferret tales Ferret tales were created by Deco Jones Entertainment Ah, I didn't see you there. Actually, I still don't see you. Because YouTube is unparalleled. It's not like Skype, where two people can talk to each other through video feeds. I mean, that's probably a good thing. I mean, how weird would it be if you opened up a video link and some crazy guy on the screen was like, I see you. Yes, even as you see me, I see you. I can see into your soul. Anyways, since this is an unparalleled program, perhaps I should at least introduce myself. I am Benjamin Talibet, the famous publisher. Unlike these arrogant writers, the author of this story wanted to remain anonymous. Therefore, I shall tell you this story in its original version before the editors got their mitts on it. This is a story of family, struggle, enchantment, gunmen, and botany miracles. A long time ago, in a land far, far away, back before the invention of ink and narrations had to be written across the stars in block yellow writing, accompanied by classical brass music, there was a poor, 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 poor farm family. They were so poor, they had to buy used hand-me-downs. They were so poor, they had to reuse their food. They were so poor, they had to put gum on layaway. They were so poor, they couldn't afford to pay respects at a funeral. They were so poor, they all had to share one shoe. In fact, all of their money was in their farm. Cause they were dirt poor! <laughs> but seriously, folks. <coughs> so, anyways. There were once two poor farmers and their son, who lived on a farm in a one-room shack. One day, the man of the house approached Jack. Hey, Zack. What? Ah! Mother Goose! Ah! For the last time, my name is Jack, Dad. Whatever, Jack, Dad. Did you take out the trash yet? No. Mom's still looking through it for tonight's dinner. What's going to be, no thank God, Christian Anderson! Gravel. Oh well. Mac, I need to talk to you. It's Jack. Whatever. Once again, our cow did not have a litter. We can't afford to keep her if she's not going to give us anything. I still say the only reason we're not getting any babies from her is because you keep trying to breed her with another cow. Well, duh! What do you expect me to do? Breed her to a different species? Dad, we've been through this. All cows are female. What? No way! Yes. That's impossible. You're making stuff up! No, all cows are female. Just like all bulls are male. Get it? Then how is that cow born? Is it a clone or something? You know what? I don't want to know. I always knew that any beast that lactates that much had to be a freak of nature. I want that satanic creature off my farm. First thing tomorrow morning, you're going to take her and sell her at the market. Get as much money for her as you can, and don't tell anyone she's not a natural born. Hey, judging by the sun, it's like it's time for my turn for the shoe. Hand it over. Yeah, baby! Unable to explain the fundamentals of cow breeding to his father, Jack prepared for his journey. The next day, he took the old family cow to the market. It was quite a thin, sickly cow, so he had trouble finding a buyer. Hey buddy, want to buy a sundial? Uh, can I trade a cow for one? You call that a cow? Looks like a black and white alley cat wearing a bell. Actually, it looks more like a young male in a cheap cow costume. 
because the filmmakers couldn't find a real stock cow. I hate my job. Poor Jack. Poor, penniless, pathetic, pale, parched, pandering, puny. Okay, we get it. I'm a pitiable person. Ooh, pitiable. I wouldn't have thought of that one. This is why people prefer professional narrators to publishers. Then Jack fell in a mud puddle. What? Ah! Oh. That wasn't in the original version! Uh. Well, it is now! That's what you'll get for making me mad. Now, as I was saying, poor Jack. There was no one in the entire marketplace who wanted his lousy excuse for a cow. Ouch. You know what? I don't have to put up with this. Cow is out. Peace. After rinsing himself off in the local reservoir, heavily polluted by the nearby oven shoe factory, Jack sulked in his misery. But just when all hope seemed lost, a creepy, sleazy salesman appeared. A little narrator told me that you're trying to sell your cow. He's not a professional narrator, but yeah. You interested? Am I interested? Ha! <laughs> I'll make you a deal, kiddo. I will take that measly cow off of your hands in exchange for something better than money. Three magic beans. What do they do? What do what do? The beans, the magic beans. Are they medicinal? Do they grant immortality, cure cancer, hunger? W will they make me taller, handsome? Will they make my skin turn blue? Will they make my dad remember my name or my mom act less like a psycho? W what? What do they do? Yes. Wow. That sounds pretty good. I still don't know. They're very rare. Last three in existence. I might not have them next time I come to see you. And they come with this nifty pouch. You got a deal. <laughs> yes! Hey, buddy. What about that cow? Uh, she went that way. She's pretty weak. I'm pretty sure I'll find her without a problem. If you typecast me, I'll be very offended. Can you stay in character for like two minutes? Sheesh, where did we get this guy? Some cardboard box at Free to Get Home outside the supermarket. Anyways, Jack took his magic beans home to show his parents. He was so excited to give them the magic beans he bought. If they did all the salesperson claimed, then all three of them would be happy and healthy, together forever. I got those beans from some crazy lady's trash. I think too easy for gravel. When he got home, however, his father was less than pleased. Are you a moron? Magic beans, I can see a magic hat, or magic slippers, or even a magic Johnson. But magic beans, what in the name of the brothers room are you thinking, Dan? For the last time, my name is Jack. How many kids do you have that you can't remember my name? One too many, I suppose. Jace, I'm very disappointed in you. Now go to your room. And don't come out until I call you for dinner! Dinner's gonna be a while! This is just gravel. We can't eat this. Why not? It's all a waste. No, wait! Save the bag! I can turn it into a sock for our family shoe! <sighs> Poor Jack. He had disappointed his father and given away the last bartering chip for three pieces of gravel. In addition, they were starving, and because he was ugly, he would never be nominated for homecoming queen. I mean, king. Even when he tried to take the coward's way out, he couldn't. Because bullets weren't invented yet. Then why do we have these? So instead, Jack went to sleep at an all-time low that night. But what he did not realize 
was that one of those three pieces of gravel was actually an ungerminated bean seed. That night, a caravan transporting a new high-tech experimental fertilizer cut across their farm field. A tub of the plant growth formula tipped out of the wagon and the entire bottle spilled onto the exact spot where the bean seed had landed when Jack's father tossed it out the window. Then, a mighty wind swept the empty bottle away, leaving no one the wiser. When Jack and his family awoke the next morning, a great surprise met them. Will Jack be able to please his parents? Whose turn is it to wear the family shoe? What does the salesperson plan on doing with that weak old cow? And what is the great surprise that Jack and his family found that morning? Here's a hint. It involves the bean. To find out, tune in next time for the continuation of this episode of Ferret Tales.